Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. So it's a family crisis. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. She cries out after us. So he didn't answer, so she went to the disciples and she's saying the same thing. You know, pray for my daughter, pray for my daughter that God would heal her and can't you heal my daughter? And she's, she's you know, inconsolable, I think. It's a family crisis. He answered and said, I was not sin except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yet yeah, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. That's Matthew's account. Now go over to Mark chapter 7. It's in verse 24. The Gentile shows her faith. Mark 7, 24. <clears throat> From there he arose and he went to the region of Tyre and Sidon and he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth and she kept asking him, actually literally it's begging. She kept begging him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this saying, go your way. For the demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. Wow. Wow. A couple of things just in background, I guess. Um, I think uh, most of us would be aware of the, the Jewishness of the Gospels and that Jesus came first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. That's part of the Gospel message, the early Gospel message. But then we have stories like this that show up where he's reaching out to the, the Gentile too. <coughs> This whole phrase about the little dogs, it is a reference, I'm sure, to a slang term used toward the Gentiles that by the Jews, that they were dogs. And yet the, the term little dog is more like a puppy under the table. You know, you're sitting at the table and the food falls to the floor, and, you know, then you're going to feed the little dog. She equated herself. She never denied the ministry of Jesus to the Jews. So as a Gentile, she acknowledged that. She said, yes, Lord. Actually, she agreed with what he was saying related to his ministry to the Jews. Yes, Lord. And then, But even the little dogs eat the bread that falls from the master's table. And so she's in faith saying, but it, there's enough for me too. That's what she's saying. There's enough there. You can, you can do this. I believe you can do this. I believe you would do that for me. That kind of thing. And so I think in, in that part of the story anyway, and it's important to look at that and think about it. Some have taken the children's bread uh, to, say, to mean uh, physical healing. That physical healing was not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. And through Jesus Christ, He healed both. He healed the Jew and the Gentile while he was on the earth. He ministered that way. 
and so that the children's bread is like that. I just think it's an interesting argument because here, here, was, here was a woman, uh, for one thing, a Gentile woman kind of arguing with Jesus, the, the, uh, the rabbi, Jesus, the son of God here, related to her family crisis. And uh, that her asking, it's one thing to talk about praying. You know, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray like you taught John's disciples, or like John taught his disciples to pray like that. And he gave them the Lord's Prayer. But in this story here, and, and there's a similar one too about the unjust judge in uh, the story of the unjust judge in Luke 18 where the widow comes and she's crying out and she's, she, will take no, she will not take no for an answer. And the, in this story you see that too. She will, she's not going away. Not, not only did uh, G Jesus was kind of silent toward her, but then she goes to the disciples because obviously she had heard that not only Jesus, but his disciples were doing all kinds of miracles and ministry with people. And so she's going to them too. And they, she has so bothered them that, that he's, they're saying to Jesus, make her go away, make her leave us alone. It's that kind of thing. And then that, that phrase, asking, meaning Begging, she is pleading with the Lord for her daughter. Now, um, I don't know. You, you've been through a family crisis with your children. You may know exactly. You may feel exactly how she felt. And so she's crying and pleading and begging and asking, and she's not going to go away. She's she's there. She's going to continue to ask. She's not going to. She's going to keep reminding the Lord of her need and. Uh, and her expectation that he would meet that need and just keep on and on and on and on with it. And uh, when is it enough? When is it enough? Why would she not go away? Well, if you've been down the road with the crisis, you know exactly what, why she wouldn't go away. It says her daughter was severely demon Possessed. I think in Mark's account, this is New King James. In Mark's account, it says an unclean spirit, which basically means the same thing as an evil spirit, an unclean spirit. And so whatever the uh, evidence or whatever the expression or manifestation of the evil spirit or the demon's work in her life, whatever that was, that it was obvious to her, that, that, to the mother, that she was never going to get over it. It was incurable. Was that kind of thing. So, yeah. And so here at Mother's Day, let's talk about the request the mother makes. First, the request. She's, you know, she, we, we looked at the text itself here. And here's trouble. You, you know, s sometimes we'll hear things, you know, people don't pray unless they're in trouble. And, uh, and then, may, then Satan wants to whisper in your ear. When you get in trouble, you're reminded to pray and Satan wants to whisper in your ear, you hypocrite, why didn't you pray before? And, no, there's no use to pray now. And this is kind of the enemy's tactic to keep God's people from praying. It's the enemy tactic. And over and over, when we, the, the Bible story as a whole over and over, God's people prayed when they were in trouble. Sometimes, major crisis was on. And, and to this woman, this was everything. This is her daughter. Everything. She's praying in when in trouble. I don't know if you have any family troubles that you're going through. We all have those, right? Maybe your life is without. Maybe your life's trouble-free. If your life is trouble free, raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody look. <laughs> Afterwards, we're going to all come and talk with you because there's no trouble in your life. <laughs> so here, here is this woman, you know, she's in trouble, pleading with the Lord. She knew where to go to find help. She had heard, so she was going to the right place. So we not only ask, obviously, when we're in trouble, but we should be asking daily, calling on the Lord. You know, the, the Apostle Paul, you know, he had the whatever the thorn in the flesh was. He prayed and prayed and prayed. He said three times. 
And then the Lord spoke to him. That's enough. <clears throat> My grace is sufficient. So some answers are like, like that, that we pray and pray and pray, and then we know God has told us to pray, to stop. I've come to a conclusion about certain prayers, and I don't know, I don't know if I'm right or not. You can, <laughs> your experience might be different. But I think if we have an issue that we feel strongly about to pray for, pray for it until the Lord tells you to stop. Just pray for it until He tells you to stop. If He tells you to stop, then you you have sufficiently prayed for that issue. We also pray, of course, and this is the mother's request, pray for your family. Now, obviously, the dad is supposed to pray too. And but in the context of Mother's Day, and in the context of the Canaanite woman here with her daughter, she's praying. We don't see dad anywhere in the story here. It's her responsibility to ask for her family. And you know, in, in a sense, this is even before God. She's come from out of town to get help. Ask for your family. Don't stop. Ask and then believe that He's going to deliver. And I think that's the whole thing. And her reply, when Jesus says it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Well, obviously, that, that's a, that is a true statement. And then in verse 27, she said, yes, Lord, yet. Yes, Lord, yet, or but. Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. In other words, there's enough for me. Even a little is enough to save her daughter. And the same thing happened in Mark's account too. It's almost the same wording there. Um, one probably came from the other. But then uh, the same here, it says, she answered and said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. And in Mark's account, he, Jesus goes on and replies, for this saying, go your way. So this saying was full of faith. Matthew's account, woman, you've got great faith. So Jesus knew exactly what she was trying to say. And her, her response to him was, was, I believe you are able to help us. There's enough, there's sufficient to help us in this time. And I think her personality and, and her persistence said, I'm not going to leave until I get an answer. Like Jacob wrestling with the angel, I won't leave until you bless me, is what happened and all night. And then he limped the rest of his life after that all night prayer meeting. So be careful about all night prayer meetings. You might be limping the next morning. Everybody hear what I'm saying? Okay. We're wrestling with God. We're dealing with the issue of Almighty God here. And in, in her case, she's dealing with interaction with the Lord Jesus Christ and her need. And she believed he was the one that could help. He was the only one that could help. Her life would forever be changed after this. Now, when we come to this kind of feeling, this kind of faith in our lives, see, and uh, that we believe so strongly that the Lord Jesus is the solution to our request, then maybe we'll start seeing some answers to our prayers too. Look in the second thing here. God's requirement and I think some of this is obvious. The Lord Jesus says in Matthew 5, Woman, great is your faith. And so there's kind of a requirement shown here. Um, Jesus didn't approach her with this whole idea of, uh, Lady, if you'll just believe, everything will be okay. No, she pressed her argument with him. Which I think is interesting in the story. Yeah. Now, Obviously, if if mother's going to be what she, what God would have her to be, and dad's going to be what God would have him to be too, um, they must be justified by faith. In uh, Paul Paul's uh, message, since you are justified by faith, faith, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, that, that's, you know, as far as our home goes, we've got to have the proper order. 
the order of things, mom, dad, know the Lord and they cry out to God. So God's requirement is faith. It, it will always be faith. The just shall live by faith. Looking at the situation, the lady had to leave her daughter at home. She couldn't even bring her down there because of her condition. When, when she realizes that the Lord has healed the daughter, she's in bed resting. The mother is, you know, is has been down there doing business with Jesus. Interacting with Jesus, talking to Jesus. God's requirement of us, think of this, you know, is the first of foremost that we are justified by faith in Christ. Now the girl would be in her right mind. Mom would go home and tell her all about Jesus. The girl, I'm sure, was saved by the next morning. Paul said we walk by faith and not by sight. Who could imagine what was going to happen? Even the disciples couldn't comprehend this story. Tell her to leave. She's bothering us. The disciples missed out on a lot. You know, they did the same thing with little children. Jesus says, suffer the little children to come to me. For such are the kingdom of God. And they, you know, they kind of bothered the disciples. The mothers bringing their children. But the truth is that as believers, we, we're not only justified by faith, but we walk by faith not by sign. So she would go down there all the way from her Canaanite city, town, all the way down to where Jesus was at that time. Find Him, find Him. And of course, I'm sure it wasn't hard to locate Him because others knew where He was anyway. And she found that's walking by faith. Doing what it would take to find a solution.